Growing up on New England farms, the West came alive for me. Saturday mornings at the Colonial Theater. Front row centers where I'd be. Saturday mornings at the Colonial Theater with Hoppy and Roy and Gene. Two big westerns for 30 cents, eight cartoons, and flat top ice cream. <laughs> My youth was spent in darkened bliss, and a new world came suddenly alive. And those old movies made the West exist, and they stirred me deep inside. Of course, we all went to the double features, you know, Saturday, you know, the, the shoot 'em ups. I wanted to watch cowboy movies. I didn't, I didn't care what the plot was. I didn't care if I got there for the start of the picture, the middle of the picture, the end of the picture, it didn't make any difference. I was gonna stay and watch it two or three times anyway. I mean, I, I, I was a typical kid every Saturday matinee. I mean, I went to the movies. And that's how, I, that's when I rode all these horses so I could get that 25 cents a week to get to the movie theater. A one penny for bubble though. You betcha, in the neighbor, little neighborhood theaters, shoot. You can't beat that and everybody playing cowgirl and, and cowboy. Uh, we would start acting the movie out. And the big argument would be who had to be Smiley Burnett or who had to be Gabby Hayes. Everybody wanted to be uh, Roy Rogers or Gene Autry or Alan Rocky Lane or Lash LaRue. Um, jingles. It was all about jingles. <laughs> I was a big fan of Andy Devine. Hello, Molly. Oh, Reno. I said, you know good and well, it's the horse first, the cowboy, the sidekick, and then the girl. From 1920 to 1967, one of every three pictures made in Hollywood was a Western. I think the Western as a genre, certainly growing up, was going Saturday morning for a quarter to the movies and seeing the B Westerns and whether it's Hoot Gibson or Hopalong Cassidy. And then uh, just as I'm 10 years old, we're getting our first black and white TV and there's Sugar Pops and Guy Madison and uh, Gabby Hayes and Roy Rogers. And I don't think, I don't know when I tore myself away from the TV matinee every day and I'd watch Don Redberry, Bob Steele, all of those old cowboys like that, you know, I loved it. You, you, you sit there th three times, watch the movies three times or whatever. Little did I dream that probably less than 15 years later I'd be working with Bob Steele and Johnny Mac Brown and, and Don Redberry. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'd rather do a Western than any other film. I would love to be out there with my BB gun playing cowboys and Indians. And here I am, years later, I'm out there playing cowboys and Indians in those, those wonderful, smooth, sculptured rocks, and I'm being paid for it. I, I can't believe my good luck. The sense of being out there in places you'd never otherwise be, in the wilds of the West, in reserves of the West, down in Mexico, and the aromas of the West and the horses. I was raised on Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, Johnny Mac Brown, the Durango Kid, Lash LaRue. Oh, yes, sir. The Lone Ranger was really the first kind of superhero. He didn't have a, a cape, but he did have a mask. Uh, probably Errol Flynn was one of my, you don't normally think of him as a cowboy, but he actually made a, a pretty good cowboy. You know. He, he looked different than those other cowboys. He wore his hat a little different. He wore his, you know, buckskin shirt a little different. I remember my first real cowboy hero, hero was Ken Maynard. And he was a guy with a big white hat. <laughs> this is a white hat cowboy. Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, uh, Randolph Scott. There's no better cowboy than Joel McRae has a ranch, every, every movie you ever see, every western you ever see Joel McRae in, that's his horse. Tom Mix came to Hollywood with bullet holes in him. <laughs> that's a real cowboy. <laughs> it's 
John Wayne and Gary Cooper. That's my number one guy, Gary Cooper. He was it, number one. Uh, you know, there's so many. To think of my favorite. I mean, I was in love with Duncan and Ronaldo and um, and Cisco Kid. Uh, Jimmy Stewart. Oh, he, he's one of my favorites. He, he's he's done some great westerns. And the man I'm supposed to bring in is. Maybe you've heard of him. The Reno Kid? Sure. Who hasn't? Uh, Bill Elliott, because of Red Rider. Sunset, oh, Sunset Carson. I love Sunset. Alan Lane. <laughs> Gene Autry, are you Roy Rogers? I was always more of a Roy guy, you know, love Gene, but nothing wrong with Gene, but somehow Roy just, you know, you know, he was my guy. Roy Rogers. My dad used to say that he was too dressed up. Yeah, yeah. I know he, he, was, he was a many Ryan He was a 50, <laughs> a 50 That's cowboy. my dad. Was Roy was, Roy was Roy. And, and... <laughs> Gene, Gene looked, Gene looked good on a horse. You know, he, he, he really did, and, and he did a lot of his own fights back then. And then, of course, John Wayne. I just, you gotta love the Duke. He's the, he's the epitome of, you know, self-reliance and honesty and all the values that we were trying to portray in Western stories. He put out his, his big hand, and he looked straight in my eyes. He said, Michael, all I want to be is your friend. Let me be your friend. Oh, I said, Mr. Wayne, I, 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 I'm flattered. I, I want to be your friend. He said, call me Duke. I said, yes, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> really started out with Hopalong casting. That was the craze. Then of course there was Roy Rogers. Then there was Rod Cameron. Then there was uh, Tom Mix. There was Tex Ritter. But I guess Randolph Scott and John Wayne. And Audie Murphy. Those three guys were consummate count. There was uh, some vulnerability. They always beat the guy that I wanted to be beaten. They were successful. They were those three guys. My heroes. The idea was to. Uh, compare the legendary Roy Rogers and the up-and-coming uh, cowboy star. The whole deal was uh, to spend a weekend at Roy's ranch. And I mean, I got to go out on a Jeep with him and we were shooting rabbits and stuff in the desert. But when Laramie came on, I started to see a hero. Somebody that looked at and I thought, that guy is when I grow up, I want to be that man. I want to be like that man. It's 50 years ago, and here there are people today still enjoying that show and thinking about it and, and, and still remember me from something that long ago. It, it, it's frightening when you think about it. It really is. But I'm thrilled. And it was my cowboy heroes that gave me values by what they did and what they said. Good guys and big white hats, they taught me right from wrong. You tip your hat to the ladies, and when it hurts, be strong. What else does anybody want to be in, in that era as a young kid but a cowboy? <laughs> Talk about fantasies, you know. Who, what kid wouldn't like to ride a horse, carry a gun, and chase the bad guy? I hope one day to do my own western so I can play a bad guy. As a kid, what a thrill. What a wicked throw it is. To be gun-toting in the movies. You know what I mean? You want to be Roy Rogers. You want to be chasing a bad guy. So that's where all the excitement is in. Roy was very good at fights. Roy did, it. you can tell, I mean, it's kind of neat, because you can tell from long shots, you know, he's being doubled or not, but in the, you know, up close and stuff, you do those the, those fist fights and stuff, and he looked, he looked good at it. I patterned my fights after Jock Mahoney, uh, you know, the Range Rider. I 
I tried to ride like Joel McRae. Of course, I never quite made that, but uh, I thought he was the best you know, horseman there ever was. A Western that didn't have horses, you know, was a disappointment. Um, and, and so it's the beauty of, of those animals that adds so much to it, you know. When we were doing all those westerns, we had 400, 600 horses that you could ride, shoot off of, that, that knew a camera, stood still, did whatever you wanted to do with them. They're all gone. There's nothing like that anymore. And the horses were supplied by Fat Jones, who started uh, providing horses to, for, for the movies in 1912, I think. And he had all the rigs, stagecoaches, wagons, uh, everything. If it had four legs, I'd ride it. Dale Evans was here. She told us that she was on location, and she was beautiful cloud, beautiful sky. And the wrangler said, Miss Dale, that's a buttermilk sky. So she named her horse Buttermilk. <laughs> I had a great horse, a wonderful horse. Bosco was his name. And he was a veteran of many, many movies. And Johnson broke him and brought him from Oklahoma. But so the story went. He, he was very calm, he had a wonderful jog, very comfortable, he just rolled in the saddle while he jogged, you know. Nobody made me get on that cayuse. I've been falling on, kicked, run over. Uh, I've had at least six horses fall over backwards on me. Put me on bucking horses, and if the horse didn't buck, they'd throw rocks at it and <laughs> didn't make it buck, and uh, I learned pretty quick how to sit on that horse. Richard Farnsworth's son, so they always stuck you on a horse, and they'd always give you the horse that wouldn't stand still, it wouldn't fail. Oh, he can ride good, give him that one. When I cast my film, finding guys that could ride a horse and be confident on a horse is, it was a challenge. My first part was a cowboy, but he was a rodeo cowboy, so it was, it was quite different. And I was in New York who had never been on a horse before. <laughs> when you walked into the casting director's office or the producer, he would say, can you ride a horse? And the actor would say, well, not really. Next, you know. So you would say, sure, I could ride. Bruce Stern tells a story, and he, he couldn't spell horse. <laughs> the producer said, can you ride? He said, like the wind got the part, Laramie, fell off the horse six times the first day. So did Warren Oates. I mean, it was a wreck. You couldn't believe it, some of these guys. But they did so many westerns that they learned how to ride pretty good. You see me on horseback, you know I'm getting paid. Where are they today, these heroes of mine who taught these lessons to me? brave and strong and always right on the silver screen and on my TV. You see, with the Lone Ranger and Tonto and Hoppy and Topper, you always knew right from wrong. And there sure wasn't much that Roy and Dale couldn't fix with bullet and trigger and a song. The best export that America has ever had has been the American cowboy. I think the world has always been interested in American Westerns because it is really Americana. It's our one unique contribution to the culture of the world. The Western is America's art form. It was the most fascinating time of our country, the West, the 1800s, and the cowboys, and the bandits, and the Indians. It was always the good guy against the bad guy, and the, and the good guy was going to win. Fill your hand, you son of a bitch! It has a strange, romantic, appeal. Back in the old days, we had mountains, you had a wagon, you had horses, and you shot a movie. America needs Westerns more now than ever. I have been so very privileged to meet some of my silver screen heroes and to stand and shake their hand, and they did not disappoint me in their words nor in their stand. And their grip was firm and steady, and their eyes looked straight at you. And now I know that what they gave me was just and fair and true. And it was all about um, loyalty and truth and doing the right thing and saying what you meant 
These were men of character, men of courage that uh, built this country. Someone who is strong and quiet, silent, you know, and, and that's the cowboy and the guy who can do whatever needs to be done. The cowboy hero is something that I believe all good people aspire to be. That, that faultless, flawless person that always does the right thing no matter how hard it is. Nobody liked Bob Steele. I mean, this, this was a gentleman, this was a fine, fine man. Everybody loved him. No, he was what I saw up on the screen for sure. And so was Don Redberry. These were good guys, these were cowboys. These actors who played the cowboys, they eventually became those characters because of the ultimate truths of the parts that they were playing. Yeah, I, I was really that character. I lived at that time. I lived and breathed the old West. There's no looking back. We've come too far. I wasn't really looking back. Just remembering back. And when they stopped making Westerns, I was, you know, sad. It's a genre that we really need to make more movies of so our kids can get that you know, I want to leave them a legacy of what I was lucky enough to be part of. Our symbol is the eagle for the United States, but it should be the silhouette of a cowboy. Because that hat, that silhouette, that guy, that one man sitting a horseback tells the story of America. Along the Navajo Trail 